So good afternoon. I think it's afternoon. I'm not quite sure. I got up so early. But good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Fayon and I am the host of Meet the Future You. And I'm really, really proud to be on this stage today. Although I've been working here at the Big Bang Fair now with Meet the Future You for six years, I am never prouder when I see four women coming with power, energy and experience in the, in the field of STEM. So um, let me just give you a little tiny hint of what you are going to be hearing. One of our panelists was a child prodigy and is also an MBE. She also passed her A-levels at age 11, correct? One, uh -huh, one of our panelists here is actually creating her own university and it's going to be opening later on this year. Another one of our panelists, you might actually already recognize because she was on a BBC TV show about astronauts. Yeah, who saw that show? You guys have got to get off your phones, honestly. And another one of our panelists is the CEO of Engineering UK, the company that actually puts on this event. So this is the might, this is the power of the women that I have on this stage. So are you ready to ask your questions? Yes, okay. Let's just get a barometer in here, first of all. Who, put your hands up if you actually want a career in STEM? You already know this. I love the volunteers at the back who are already working and putting their hands up. <laughs> okay, well, let's see how we can inspire you. So we're going to start right here. So we're going to start with Jacqueline, first of all. Do you have your microphone? You can have that. Oh, I don't. You can have mine. So just a quick intro. Um, so hi, I'm Jackie. Uh, I'm a mathematician who then became a theoretical physicist. Uh, I've had many different jobs and I didn't really know if STEM was for me when I was your age. Um, and I currently work in Imperial in computing. Um, so I've moved around a lot. And yeah, in 2017, I took part in a program called Astronauts, Do You Have What It Takes? Where I was with 12 contestants from, chosen from across the UK to see if we had what it takes to become an, an astronaut. So yeah, that's me. I'm Hilary, I'm the new Chief Executive of Engineering UK, the organisation that puts on the fair that you're at, and we're all about inspiring the next generation to be working in engineering and STEM. Um, I always knew science was for me, but I wasn't quite sure which area of science or engineering. I started up very passionate about maths and physics. I flirted with biochemistry and genetics. I did psychology and I ended up in psychology and neuroscience. So I've kind of flitted around a bit um, and I also have moved around in my career. So I was in research. Um, I then actually took six years out and had three wonderful children in that period came back in and worked in policy. So working with parliamentarians to try and make um, it, the country work better for science and engineering and benefit more from it. And then I worked to um, inspire the next generation. And I worked at Welcome for seven years and now I'm at Engineering UK. Hello everyone, I'm Elena. Uh, I am originally from Mexico, and when I was little, I used to operate on my dolls because I wanted to be a doctor. But then I discovered that I wasn't very good with blood, so I decided that I, I was going to do something else, and I studied uh, mechanical engineering. Then I came to the UK and became an academic, uh, an educator, working with young people engineers, engineer, in engineering to design solutions for people's, people with disabilities. And I always wanted to start my own university to use that opportunity to uh, teach students to learn through projects, on hand-on projects experientially. And so I'm in Hereford, uh, trying to start at the first new university in 40 years in the UK. Uh, 
Hi everyone, my name's Amri Maffedon. Um, I was the child prodigy that you heard about there. So I did two GCSEs when I was 10, one in maths and one in ICT. And then I did an A-level in computing at 11. Um, I really have always liked maths and computing. Um, so I did that at university and went to Oxford and read maths and computer science. Um, and then I worked in the city at a big bank called Deutsche Bank um, in their technology department. Um, and I had enjoyed myself the whole time. I love computer science, love maths, and loved my whole experience and I actually wanted to have more of people like you, more, more young people but also particularly more girls joining me um, to live the high life and enjoy life working in technology and in STEM. Um, so now I run an organisation called STEMETS um, where everything is always free for you to attend. We always have fun and there's always food because everyone likes free food. Yeah, there we go, a lot of nods, there we go. I also like the free food and I get to eat it all along with you. Um, and I also do lots of work around policy and making sure that actually the more technology that we have that we're using, um, that we make sure that the government and different policies making sure that that technology doesn't harm us, but also that different types of people are shaping that technology and how it's being used. Um, so that's what I do at the moment. Round of applause. Okay. I need not say any more. Let's start with the questions. Who's got the first question? Question number one, right here. Thank you. What is the most important tip or piece of advice you can offer visitors today? And what is the most important tip or piece of advice you can offer visitors today? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll offer something that was offered to me when I had my first job, and that is uh, make mistakes, learn from them, and move on. Uh, but just, just be confident. It, there is nothing wrong. Nothing is going to happen. If you make the mistake and learn from it, then you'll be fine, okay? Okay, I will add one, which is don't worry if you don't have a plan. So I didn't have a plan. I've not really planned out my career. I've not seen the, the one a step away that I was aiming for. I actually was just following what I was really enjoying and I've been really fortunate that it's taken me to, every time I've moved, I've felt it's been a better and better fit and I've enjoyed it more and more. So for some people, planning it out works, but if you don't have a plan, don't panic. Um, my tip is don't do it alone. So I think sometimes you can feel maybe it's lonely if you're the only person in your physics class or if you're really interested in something and you don't know anyone else that's interested. Events like this are fantastic for you to meet other people that are like-minded, but also see the different companies and the different organizations that might help you along. Uh, maybe getting mentors, maybe getting fellow teammates and collaborators. Um, so don't do it on your own. Seek other people that might want to work alongside you. Yeah, and I think it's hard for me to add to all of that. Um, but my dream, so going on astronauts, I always wanted to become an astronaut, but I never felt confident enough to, to tell people. I felt like it was a weird thing and people laughed. Uh, I think, you know, what, what the other women are saying, there's lots of support for you out there. You should be brave. You should go for what you want because even if you're not in that group, that you, you, your community now, you'll find that community one day and you'll feel like you belong and that you can, you can do your dreams. So go for your dreams. Fantastic. Thank you. Where is our second question, please? And we'll get a microphone to you. Thank you very much. What inspired you to work in science and, and, and engineering? Um, so I, I really enjoy technology. I'm a very creative person, um, but I don't draw pictures or write stories. I make things. Um, so actually, the thing that inspired me to work in technology was that I could be paid to do something that I do for free anyway, which makes things easier. And if, you, if you're paid, then you can buy more food, which is what I spend all my money on. Uh, Okay, so I wanted to be a doctor and I really didn't know what I, I wanted to do. So I chose inspiration from my surroundings. I come from a big city in Mexico where there is a, a lot of industry. So I just took inspiration from my surroundings and I decided that studying engineering would be a good job career for me. Um, I think, yeah, for me, I kind of just fell into it. I was very good at maths and I didn't really know where maths would take me at that age. And then as I've kind of grown up, I've kind of learnt more avenues for that. And I think when I was younger as well, I used to read a lot of books. So even though these were like fairy tale books and sci-fi books, I wanted to see if we could 
do the science that was in those sci-fi novels and so I was really interested in that type of science fiction which is how I got into theoretical particle physics. Yeah, I think it isn't a single thing for me, but it was always where I was heading. So um, I do remember probably one of the most striking memories was watching the first series of Life on Earth with David Attenborough, who I just cannot believe is inspiring my children, having inspired me when I was about eight or nine. Um, but then actually, again, loved the maths, really was following that pathway and seeing where it would take me um, and just always following my heart so it wasn't a single thing that inspired me but I was also in a home setting where there were lots of engineers and um, it felt like a very natural course so if that was where I was heading there were there were no barriers in my way and there were lots of things I could take apart and sometimes put back together thank you where is question three please question three raise your hand you got a three thank you so um what did you enjoy when you were at school? <laughs> oh, okay, I'll go with this one. So I've mentioned I really loved maths and physics. Um, I had a great discussion with one of my friends where I was saying, you know, we didn't go to a sporty school. I keep hearing, like, I see all these people have these opportunities, they're doing all these sports clubs. And she's like, yeah, we did. We went to a sporty school and there were all these other things. And all you did was mass physics, you went to the computer club and you read New Scientist. Um, so I think it was, it was always there. That's what I did. <laughs> I actually enjoy making friends. Uh, I, I, I really, I am an only child, so being at school with all other people my age was what I enjoyed the most, but I liked spelling in Spanish too. <laughs> um, my favourite was geography, um, because my geography teacher was really cool and let us do stuff like cutting and sticking quite a lot in lessons, and I quite enjoyed that because I was doing stuff with my hands. Um, and my second favourite was French, so I really enjoyed learning French. Um, till today, I hate reading and writing in English. I really dislike reading in English. If you give me a French book, I don't know why, I just really like it. So yeah. I almost did French at university actually, but they, they said I'd have to write certain things in English. And that's when I was like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so I, I kind of liked everything at school, but I was quite artsy. So I did my art GCSE um, two years early and I was actually wanting to do music at university. So my A-levels were uh, music, history and maths and general studies so just like not on that I've actually kind of gone into um, but I, I think that creative side is really important as well because it means that in my work I'm, I use that art and that music to, to think a bit more outside the box so yeah so they were my favorite subjects. Um, hello. Okay, what's been the biggest challenge that you've faced in your working life so far? I'll go with that. Starting my new university. <laughs> now, yes, starting a new university from scratch is hard, but it's worthwhile. And so I'll keep going uh, and I won't give up. Um, so for me, um, the, so there's two things. So the first one was that when I did my PhD, because I moved into theoretical physics, it's a very male dominated area and I was the only female in my department for two and a half years, I think I was the only female. Um, so that, that was quite difficult, um, but it, it, was, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but it was just difficult. Um, but then I think through that I got to join the cheerleading team and I got to meet loads of inspirational women, so they kind of balanced things out. And then secondly, um, when I was on Astronauts filming with the BBC, um, they gave me a challenge which I found extremely difficult uh, where they dunked me underwater um, and I couldn't swim before that. Uh, so that was probably <laughs> the most difficult, I don't know if it's work related, but definitely one of the most difficult things I ever had to, had to deal with. Um, if I'm being honest, my, the hardest thing in my career has been um, working with other people. I think when you do maths and computer science, you're in control and things are quite logical. And two plus two is still four, unless it's really large values of two. Um, and that has always been true, even when the first person discovered it. Whereas I now have a team and, and have to work with lots of different people. 
and I might say some hello to them today and hello tomorrow and I get two completely different responses. So I have to be able to manage that and look after them and work with human beings. Yeah. Um, I've now remembered seeing you do that, Jackie, and uh, you were amazing. So it may have been a challenge, but you were really incredible in it. Um, I think probably the biggest challenge or disruption to my career was taking six years out, which is a pretty long time to take out, and I was really lucky to have been able to do it. It was a very precious time for me. But thinking about how you get back in after that um, can, can be a bit worrying. In fact, actually, it really became an opportunity for me. I was able to do quite a bit of work thinking about what I wanted to do and ended up in a setting that I really enjoyed all the more. And I think if I hadn't had that, that break, I might have just kept doing what I was doing in slightly different places in a slightly different way. But that really showed me that I could just do something completely different and then the next move I made was completely different again. And actually realizing you, you might be in an area where you're not the expert, but you know a whole load of stuff that they don't know from what you did before. And that can be very powerful. Wonderful. We have a question here now. How can we encourage more young women to consider STEM careers? Oh, this is, this is my job, so um, free food is, is a big part of it. I think the other thing is the fact that there's lots of women that have been before us that have worked in STEM careers that we might not know about. So if I say the name Hedy Lamar, does that ring any bells with any of you? Um, she was a, a Hollywood actress. If any of you know um, Betty Boop, the character, she was based off her. Um, she was a massive Hollywood actress who also was a physicist and an inventor. And if any of you are keen physicists, you'd have heard of um, frequency hopping spe spectrum technology. Any of you heard of that? A couple of you. If you haven't heard of that, some of you will have heard of Wi-Fi yeah, or Bluetooth. There we go. So that's the technology that underpins it, right? And so what's actually happened is we've ended up not really telling people about the women that have been before. And so I, I believe and I've seen from what we do that when girls get to meet women, lots of different people, when they get to see them, you can kind of see we're all normal. We're all wearing two pairs of shoes like you wear two pairs of shoes. We all had breakfast this morning. Like you had, did we have breakfast, ladies? Yeah, there we go. And um, we're just like you. And actually you could, there's nothing stopping you from being up here on this stage or working in a STEM career. Um, but also it's incredibly creative. It's not just about the maths and memorizing formulae. It's actually about solving problems and helping people, which again, we, not enough people know that that's what it's about. So that's what I think we need to do. And free, the free food just helps it all kind of go down a little bit easier. Um, it's something I'm really keen to understand more about how we can make sure that everyone's getting the opportunity to have wonderful careers in STEM. And clearly, something is holding some groups back, or and, and understand that I think is critical. Um, I'd love to hear from you. You could come and talk to me after if there are things that you think organisations like STEMETS and Engineering UK and all of us should be doing. I think challenging anything, any assumptions that are made about anyone, wherever you hear that, and that isn't just a girl challenging an assumption about girls, it's boys challenging assumptions about go go girls and everyone about everything, I think is really important. So we just change the culture around us. And I think your point about networking, because actually I thought very hard about doing physics at university, and I did feel a, a bit too isolated, and I, and, and I regret that I wasn't better networked. I didn't quite see how it was going to work for me. So actually, if there is a point where you are feeling, whatever walk of life you are in, that you, you're a bit low, alone and you need a bit of support, drawing a network around you, you will always be able to find one, I think can be really powerful. Yes. Um, okay, we have another question. I can't believe we've got about two minutes left. So we're going to take two more questions, one here and one here. Thank you. Yes. Ask your question. What, what have you been most proud of in your working life so far? I have been the most proud of uh, working with some colleagues um, back at the University of Sheffield at the time where we started uh, Women in Engineering Student Society and I can see them from here because um, uh, just in relation to the other question, we have to open, uh, the, the, we remove barriers 
And removing barriers requires everyone to, to do it. And, and to me, that, that was a very valuable um, activity, a very valuable um, thing to do. And, and just to see that they are still here, it reminds me that I was involved in the creation of that. And hopefully, this new university will be my next proud, uh, proud thing. Um, at the risk of sounding a little cheesy, <laughs> I'm new in role at Engineering UK. I, I feel so happy to have that role. Um, but actually, I, I've only been here two months, so really I can't claim any credit for the fair that is going on around you. But I feel immensely proud of the, t the Engineering UK team and being part of that team and hopefully really um, helping to change people's lives. Um. So I think for me, it was the fact that, so my, my family aren't sciencey, um, they're not educated, they never went to university, my friends never went to university, and I think I'm quite proud, looking back, that I was quite strong to make that decision to, to go to university and do something that's different, um, quite different to my community. Um, and not only going to university and get my maths degree, but then staying and get my master's degree, and then graduating with a PhD. And um, I think my parents were quite proud of that moment. And then not only that whole experience, but now in my new role at Imperial College, I'm kind of um, in charge of improving the diversity and equality in the Department of Computing. Um, so again, not my area of expertise, um, but I feel like my, my experience has helped shape that. And also I'll be able to get more women into these areas of STEM that are maybe from underrepresented groups, like from me back home, so. Um, so there's lots of things that I'm proud of that I've achieved in my career. I'm gonna in fact say two of the coolest things that I think have happened to me. So firstly, um, I have an MBE, which means that the Queen knows who I am and like wrote a letter to me, and I got to meet the Queen, which I think is kind of cool, because we love Liz. And then the second thing is, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, we got an email in the inbox. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of Dave, that's got the album out, Santan Dave. Um, so if you watch very carefully, Dave's uh, black video, out, um, black video, 45 seconds in, you see me. Right? So cool, I couldn't believe it, I thought it was a joke. But you're having a music video, which I don't know, little me never knew, that wasn't really what I was going for, but it happened. What is the funniest thing that have what has ever happened to you at work? What is the funniest thing that has ever happened to you at work? <laughs> You've stumped them. <laughs> I don't know if I can say this. Kids say the funniest things. So at Stemets events, we hear a lot of things. Um, I don't know. The funniest thing, so a couple of weeks ago we held a hackathon and girls got to build their own mobile apps um, and we had two six-year-olds who basically stood up. Maybe you had to, some funny things you have to be there, I guess, but they stood. They had only had two minutes to present their app and they'd built a really good app and they just laughed the whole way through and so it was really funny because they were laughing and we were all laughing. So it was a room of about 200 people all just laughing together because two six-year-olds were laughing. I don't know, maybe you, you're laughing, there we go. Anything to add? I, I think, so before I got into science, I used to be a youth worker. Um, and there was so many just ridiculously funny things. Like, you guys are so crafty. Like, you're ridiculously crafty. And even though you go, oh, I can't really do science, I can't really problem solve. You can solve a lot of problems when it comes to getting your own way. Um, and so we had this, this little boy who was always quite a character. And um, I'd been telling them for ages, like, you need to hoover up. This is your mess. Hoover up. I'm, I'm not doing it. And this is me being strict. And he always had a way of making me laugh. So we both ended up laughing about this situation. Anyway, he gets the hoover. He's hoovering up. I walk off. Next minute, my ponytail gets hoovered. And I'm going, stop, stop. Everyone is laughing. And I couldn't, la I couldn't tell them off because I couldn't stop laughing as well. I was like, just get out. Just get out. <laughs> yeah, that's probably mine. <laughs> All right. We'll save you both from any further... Any, any embarrassment at all. So, um, can you put your hands up if you feel inspired by the talks and what you've just heard? Don't say it to please me, but I'm like, I have both hands. Right, so anybody here can be on this stage in a few years' time. The only thing that will ever stop you from achieving what you want in life is you. 
you must believe in yourself and you must surround yourself with people who are on board. So can you give a massive round of applause to our all-female STEM panel?